We have here a painting of Apollo and Daphne by Paolo Veronese. It shows that familiar myth. Apollo, the god, was greatly in love with the nymph Daphne. She was less interested, so she fled his advances, uh, running off into the forest and praying to her father, the river god Peneus, to help her escape from this plight. She wanted to remain chaste, having pledged herself to the goddess Diana. Her father's solution for this plight was to transform her into a tree, a laurel tree to be specific. So the famous metamorphosis that we see in many works of art is as Daphne is running and her fingers turn into branches and her toes begin to root. Most often this is shown at the height of the chase with Apollo just about to catch Daphne as she begins this transformation. Here, Veronese gives us a kind of uh, different, slightly humorous take on the story by showing us a few moments later, Apollo would have been chasing Daphne from this side, um, following her, she's looking back at him as she freezes. As she becomes a tree, he then catches up, walks around her and looks up with uh, bafflement um, at this metamorphosis that's occurred. Looking up at those leaves uh, at the top of the picture, though, you notice immediately that they're not against a bright blue sky, but instead a muddy brown one. And one of the primary questions having to do with the date and the condition and, and the connection of this with other pictures by Veronese was, what are we looking at? Is this an unfinished picture, perhaps? Was the sky never painted? Is this some sort of ground layer? Or is it something that's been very damaged? Likewise, the sketchiness, the very painterly but unfinished, unresolved aspect of, for example, Daphne's robes, was this sketchy because it was one of these late pictures that Veronese did where he just block things in? Or did it seem sketchy because we were missing layers of glazing on the surface? So, as often, this is the case where we began talking about the picture with the conservatives from BACC. And you can see, actually, with your naked eye, many of the damages to this painting. And it is a damaged painting. Um, all of this red lake glaze has, has been missing. You're losing the modulation of the drapery. You're losing the form. There's also loss of these, these shadows here defining the garment here. But the most telling is over in the sky area, you can actually see the tops of the canvas weave poking through the paint. This was an abraded painting, a painting that had been damaged um, years and years of harsh cleanings. And, and so some of its infelicities are the result of this. So you have a, a bright line or a sharp line between the lit and shadowed part of Apollo's torso. This must have been softened by glazes originally. And this is just not up to the quality that we expect from a Veronese. John was asking these questions, and coincidentally, a colleague of ours, Dr. Eric Uffelman from the Washington and Lee University in Virginia, um, was going to be traveling to the West Coast, and he offered to bring his portable XRF spectrometer. But that's a portable handheld device that helps us determine the elemental composition of a paint or a pigment. He can take the XRF device, place it in front of an unknown pigment or paint. The paint is bombarded with low radiation and that radiation is reflected back into the XRF device. A resulting spectra tells us what elements are in the pigment. So we wanted to determine what this beige pigment was. Was it a ground layer? Was it a calcium carbonate? Was it a white lead? Or was it something like cobalt, which would be smalt? Now smalt is a pigment that was used in the 16th and 17th century, and it's a cobalt-containing glass, and it is known to discolor over time. So you've got ground glass, almost clear color, in an oil matrix, and that oil discolors over time and becomes a yellow brown. The limitations of the handheld XRF device is that the sampling area is much, much larger than a benchtop model. We're talking about three millimeters in diameter. So you have to position the device exactly where you want to take the analysis. You can get the different layers of the painting. So you may be getting elements that are in the top two layers of paint as well as the ground. So also comparing your results to having a cross section of the painting, which shows you the ground layer, the underpainting layers, and any top layers, will help you determine which elements are in which layers. The handheld device also cannot give you quantitative information. It can't tell you how much smalt is in the painting. It can only tell you that it is there. And 
doing more of the art historical research, we found that when the National Gallery in London had treated its Veronese paintings in the previous decade or so and wrote up technical reports, they found other works specifically from this time in the mid-1560s where Veronese used smalt and indeed in some of them you see that same brownish sky behind the and figures. And they, they had four that had smalt, but four that had blue skies. Exactly. That had another pigment which is called azurate and it's a copper containing pigment. So the XRF analysis of this painting would definitively tell us cobalt, smalt, copper, right. azurite. And again, we had a nice point of comparison because we could look at this painting and then we could go next door to the Timken Museum and look at their painting by Veronese, which still retains a bright blue sky. So when we performed the XRF analysis on the beige colored sky of the San Diego Museum of Arts Veronese and the blue sky of the Timkins Veronese, the resulting spectra confirmed our suspicions. Here you can see the spectra from the Apollo and Daphne. In it are peaks for cobalt, arsenic, iron, and silicon. The cobalt minerals used in the manufacture of glass always contain cobalt, arsenic, and iron. The silicon would be from the glass itself. So the sky was painted using smalt. The discoloration of smalt to this brown or beige color is mainly attributed to the interactions of the chemicals in the glass with the surrounding oil medium. To contrast the Apollo and Daphne with the Timkins Veronese, the resulting XRF spectra from the blue sky shows a strong peak for copper, which would indicate that the sky was painted with copper-containing azurite as opposed to smalt.